It's never great when you crash your drone, and generally you're left immediately wondering why it happened and how to get it fixed and what to do next. Well, look, as you can see, sadly, I have had a bit of a mishap with my favorite drone, the DJI Mini 3 Pro, and initially I was genuinely struggling to work out what caused it to plummet over 40 feet down, smashing onto some very unforgiving rocks below. So today, I'm gonna to go through how to find out what went wrong when you crash your drone, how to get it fixed, and how to get up in the air again. I play with drones and this is my broken DJI Mini 3 Pro damaged last week up in the Yorkshire Dales when it fell as I said over 40 feet um, uh, when I was trying to film a waterfall and it fell down and smashed on rocks below. Um, I do fly lots of drones and have done for a fair few years. I can actually count on one hand the number of crashes I've had but this one really annoyed me at the time as I couldn't work out what had gone wrong. One second I was adjusting the camera settings on the remote control and the next second I hear the props hitting branches and I look out to see it with all its lights uh, falling down and then smashing onto the rocks below. Annoyingly, as I predicted on my Mini 3 unboxing video earlier this year, the very first thing to break in the crash would be the exposed gimbal uh, and the camera and this is indeed what's happened here. You can see it dangling very un, uh, unhappily. Um, it's also suffered other structural damage as well. Like I said, it fell over 40 feet straight down onto rocks. So this is definitely going to be a DJI repair jobby. Uh, uh, it, it's not a great result. But when this happens, I always think you need to find out what went wrong and of course, how to get it fixed. And in this case, I really, really wanted to know what had gone wrong, as at the time, I wasn't even touching the sticks and I was actually in a camera menu. So the first thing to do when this happens is to get something called the flight logs. These are a technical record of everything that happens to your drone on each flight and they record automatically each time you fly. Now ordinarily, to get these flight logs, you would simply attach your phone to your computer, navigate through to the DJI Go 5 app, which is what it's known as technically behind the scenes, that's the fly app, and then you would just grab the text file. But uh, obviously with the RC remote, there is no phone, but it is just as easy. So what you've got to do is have your uh, laptop or your computer and you get a USB-C cable like this and you just plug it straight into the initial um, exposed USB-C socket there. Then you're going to turn on the RC remote and wait for it to boot up and then eventually it should display a little message telling you that it is connected to the, uh, via the USB to your computer and then on your computer it will actually appear as an external storage drive. Uh, click on the internal storage and the text files are stored at the very top level. You'll see here all the uh, text files from all the flights that I've done over the last few months. And obviously therefore you're looking for the um, text file with the modified date and time that matches the date and time of uh, the flight you made. And then you wanna go to airdata.com and upload the text file there. Now I have used airdata.com loads of times over the years and I simply cannot recommend it enough, mainly because you get pretty much everything you need and it's all for free, which I always think is, uh, is brilliant. But all you gotta do is upload the text file. You can then take a look and actually play back the flight. And when you look at the um, HD player that they've got, it is an interesting flight and short, sadly. Um, like I said, this little playback feature that allows you to play, it animates the flight and it also lists all of the technical events below. So as we play it back here, you can see that the home point is updated and then I fly out for a couple of seconds away from the trees to get it safe and out into the open. Then I let go of the sticks, leaving it hovering whilst I'm checking a camera setting. And you can see the stick movements that I'm making in the bottom right of the player here. So as I said, I fly out and uh, I leave it hovering. And this is where it goes wrong. Because whilst I'm in the camera settings, without touching the sticks, you can see the drone starts to drift backwards by itself. Now, it wasn't windy by any stretch on this day, but there were loads of trees around, and crucially, there was a bit of a gorge, and it was a bit of a ravine with high rocks and hills either side of the river. And here, you look down, you can see it's struggling with GPS signal lock before it finally updates the home point. 
But this is the issue and this is what went wrong. Because of all the trees around me, when I was flying, I was completely focused on the drone and not the screen. There were, there were trees above me, there were branches above me, uh, all around me to the side, and I had uh, part of the hillside as well. So I had a lot of risks here, so I was focused solely on the drone itself. And as soon as that home point had updated, I then raised up and flew out to open space away from the trees to get away from any risks. And it was only at that point, uh, when it was hovering, uh, taking my fingers off the sticks, that I finally then focused on the remote control rather than the drone itself. And that was the fatal error because looking back through the flight logs, yet again, I've been caught out by missing a message on screen because I was looking at the drone itself. If we go back a little bit on the air data screen, this was the critical message. Weak GPS, signal hovering unstable. But crucially, that's immediately followed by the audible home point updated message, which I heard whilst I was looking up at the drone. And of course, I took that to mean I now had a good GPS lock. So at that point, I then flew up, flew out, and only at that point did I then focus on the camera settings. But let's take a look at the air data screen. Look at the satellite count. It never goes above 13 for the entire flight. And in fairness to me, without any warning, the drone started drifting backwards in the breeze whilst I was looking at the remote's uh, camera settings. And so it happily drifts backwards into the trees. The props hit the twigs, they stop, and of course down it goes. And so this, people, is the main point of this video today. It's not the easiest video to make, but it is why I'm filming it and why I'm making it, because I don't want you to make the same mistake. Really, I, I think you always need to learn from mistakes, otherwise where, where are we? My mistake here, I think, was assuming that the home point being updated message, the audible message, is a go for flight, and it's an indication of strong GPS signal. Clearly, it's not. The drone uses GPS to know exactly where it is. It's absolutely critical. So if you haven't got a strong GPS signal, you're gonna have a problem. It uses the GPS signal to alter the props and make sure that it is staying stationary when you take your fingers off the stick. So the bottom line here is that if the drone doesn't have a strong GPS signal, then it won't know where it is in relation to the ground and it may drift without any input from you. And that is exactly what's happened here. So you need to be checking the satellite number up here on the top right of the screen. You can even tap it to expand it. As a general rule of thumb, you really want a minimum of 15 satellites, 16, 17 is, is, is probably the bare minimum. And if you don't have that number, you will suffer drifting like happened here. So look, there you go, that's the flight analysis. Um, it's important because that is the only way you're gonna learn from when things go wrong. So the next step obviously is to get things repaired. Now, DJI have really upped their game and it really is very easy to get the uh, ball rolling on the repair process. Um, on your computer, you wanna go over to uh, the support pages of DJI.com and you follow these simple clear instructions for requesting a repair service online. Now, many of you will have taken out Care Refresh, and if you have, then there is a separate flow process that will guarantee you a replacement drone even, even quicker. Me, personally, the number of drones I've got, I tend not to go for Care Refresh. And so, if you haven't got Care Refresh, or if it's out of warranty, this is where you click, you go for the paid service request. First off, of course, you're gonna to need to enter the serial number of the drone itself. Now, if you've logged in, uh, you may see a list of your devices uh, that you can then select. Um, if you need to get the serial number itself, on the Mini 3, it's pretty, um, it's inside here, it's tiny down here inside the uh, battery cover. You're pretty much gonna have to take a photo of it in good light and then expand the photo in order to uh, see what the serial number is. But once you've entered that, it will take you through a few pages of questions where you complete details about what happened. Uh, this uh, process route also covers warranty claims and during the process you get to select whether or not you believe it was pilot error or a malfunction of the unit itself. And if you select the malfunction option they will then want to see your flight logs to work out what went wrong. So you've already got the flight logs but it's even easier when you're going through the repair process request because 
they can actually check your flight logs remotely if you synchronize them and that is incredibly easy. Again, you're just gonna go back to the remote control. You're gonna swipe down from the uh, top screen and enable Wi-Fi to make sure it's connected to the internet. Then all you do is go into your little profile option here and select synchronize. It's gonna take a few minutes to upload your flight, but that is all you need to do because once these flight logs are synchronized with your uh, account, then all you have to do on the uh, repair process is specify the date and time of the flight that caused the issue. And they will know what flight log to look and they'll be able to establish exactly what went wrong. So then you're just gonna go through the last few pages, answering the questions as they come up. Eventually, you're gonna to get to the submission page and it'll give you a summary that you can then print a few times as they need a copy of that included inside the box. But this is then the point where you actually need to wait and don't send the unit off quite yet because usually within a few hours, you should then get a reply email from the back office of DJI support with further instructions. And this is really crucial for those of us in the UK now that we're not part of Europe anymore. We need some additional documentation and crucially something called the commercial invoice that must be printed off a few times and included both inside the box and on the box in a plastic cover. But that's it. Print off the copies, follow the packaging instructions, take it to your local uh, courier drop-off point and wait. And that is what I will be doing after this filming this video. I've got to pack it all up, take it down to the, uh, to the uh, UPS. Um, in the past, DJI normally take around five to seven working days to assess and come back to you. Um, they'll inspect the unit, they outline charges for the repair if it's not under warranty, and then you can choose to pay for it or you just ask for it to be returned without repair. So you know exactly what it is going to cost before you actually commit to having to pay. Then what actually happens, uh, once you actually pay, DJI will actually just send you a refurbished unit from their factory stock. It means you're gonna get a different unit back with a different serial number, but crucially, you're not kept waiting for weeks whilst they repair your actual unit. So I think that's a very good process actually. It means that you've got it back as soon as possible and you're up in the air flying again. So look, there we are. Um, it's never great making videos on crashes, especially if it's a crash that has happened just from flying, um, as opposed to, I mean, sometimes I'm testing these things out and you kind of uh, running a few extra risks. But as I said, when it happens, you do need to learn, you do need to move on. And hopefully um, what I've gone through today will help you out if you find yourself in this same position. Make sure you have got full GPS before you take off. It's not enough just to wait for that home point updated messages. Anyway, look, on that particular day, I was lucky enough to have my Air 2S to hand as well to capture the videos and pictures of what I actually wanted. So, um, I was lucky because I had quite a bit of extra filming to do up there. So on that, I will leave you with some of the nicer clips I filmed of the Yorkshire Dales and the North Pennines. And as ever, until next time, have fun.